Hi! Today we're going to be painting a purple poppy. I have toned my paper with a watery wash of acrylic and let it dry. It's kind of like an indigo color. And we're starting out with white, um, cadmium yellow, magenta, ultramarine blue, phthalo green, and black. Um, so these are the basic colors that I've been starting a lot of my paintings with. We might need an extra one here or there. We'll see. Um, but this is, oh, I think what we need to start out. So I'm going to, I'm planning on doing one big bloom right in the kind of center of my paper. Um, and then purple, well, all poppies have these beautiful, like little seed pods that are this light green color. So I'm thinking of arranging some of those kind of, um, to accent the bloom. So I'll see how I feel. I kind of go <laughs> play it by ear to, uh, you know, see what sort of additions I want after the bloom's in there. So, but that's my plan. And I've got about four reference photos I pulled off of Pinterest up on my desktop that I'm just kind of looking for color, for kind of the different ways that the bloom can be composed, what like way it can face. So I'm starting out with white and with, um, my magenta and I thought because the black the background is kind of a dark purpley blue I might tend my light purple for the flower more towards a pink purple so it will have some contrast and they come in a range of colors I see ones that are much more pink purple and then other ones that are like a deeper kind of a, a magenta a deep magenta kind of a color so there's a variety of ways you can take this, but I think I'll tend a little bit more on the pinky side to get that warmer contrast up against the blue. Ooh, I think that's going to be so pretty with some like light yellowy green um, pods and leaves. I think that'll be gorgeous. So poppies, these poppies, purple poppies, have four big petals. So I think what I'm going to do is, I think I'm going to have it, mm, it's like part of me doesn't really want it to be, to be dead center. So I'm imagining upper, lower, eh, okay, it'll probably end up being off center a little bit by the time because I kind of just build it organically. So I'm going to put in my first huge petal here and I'm doing it a nice big oversized style because I love that. We can get lots of pretty details and colorful strokes in here and they kind of have a little fluttery edge to the petals which I am going to embrace with my brush strokes here. I used to not care for the color purple in my paintings at all. I would never use it. And then I had a collector that I was doing a commission for ask for purple poppies in her painting. And that totally won me over. I love these flowers. They're so, so gorgeous. I'm going to get a little white to kind of just help this petal, um, help us see the edge of it in front of the other one. And yeah, so ever since then, I really realized that like you can use purple in so many more um uh what's the right word sophisticated I think that's the right word sophisticated ways um than just like primary purple which I tend to think of like crayon purple when I think about purple but yeah these these won me over and they can have um the edges of the petals can have kind of fluttery in and out sort of shapes so I'm going to be Carving, carving that out here, there. I like that better. Kind of drawing the edge. I was trying to feel feel it out. What what way I like to define my petals in the beginning? I think drawing the edge with my brush tip is nice. Just fill these guys in. Ooh, I might be running out of my purple a little bit here. Let's see. So. I just, one of the things that I adore about these flowers is that they have this striking, like whitish yellow green center. And then these dark patches on the petals surrounding it is just so dramatic, such 
beautiful contrast, which I'm always looking for in my paintings is contrast. I love bold contrasts. So um, I'm excited to do those when we get there. Okay, we'll whip up a little bit more of this purple. Now this petal, I want it to be kind of tucked underneath the edge of those other ones. So we'll just kind of stick it in there. Now I'm kind of looking, I, I kind of want this petal to get a little larger. It didn't quite be, it's not quite as wide as I um, want this whole flower to be to kind of fill the the width of the paper a little bit more there we go okay actually I'm not going to worry about these shapes overlapping as much because I can just kind of whoa that's it got a little bright I'll soften it And this petal is a bit foreshortened, like it's more coming towards us as the flower's folding. So we'll just kind of leave that a bit shorter than the other ones. I still, I feel like this one there. I think I wanted it to have a bit more of a, a square edge there as I see them having that sort of unique shape. Cool. Okay, great. I think that lays out the, the, the framework. Um, let's see, what do we want to do for our next layer? So they kind of fade to a darker purple in the center. So I think I'm gonna go ahead and do a more intense pinky. Ooh, that's lovely, look at that. Just that sort of pink. Mm, I think I'm just gonna go with that. It's much more, well, maybe we'll do it. I like when it's not just all like variations on a single color or, you know, like shades of a single color. So like the same kind of ratio of pink to blue, but with white, with more or less white in it, if that makes sense. I, I like it having some areas that actually have more of the pink in the mixture. So I think I'm going to try that. Yes. And as I'm stroking it in, I have to remember, I want to leave some of this lighter purple up here but I want this pink to go far enough so that when I add the darker marks on the inside, it's not completely covering up the pinks. So you kind of have to balance those things. I think it could go a little higher in the middle of each petal. I think that'll be nice because the dark, the dark shape is kind of like right there. I wanted to say the dark mark, but that sounds like ominous, doesn't it? <laughs> There we go. I think that I'm going to take that back a little bit. There. And this can be kind of mushy in the beginning, like as you're sort of just getting these first layers in, it's all kind of blending together and getting a little scrubby and not perfect, but that's okay. That's like, these are just the beginning layers. Um, often when I'm in the middle of a painting, it goes through this period that's just the ugly middle. Like, I think most artists feel that way about their work, where it really is just in development and is not perfected in any way. And so don't get worried if you feel like your work is going through an ugly middle period. Just keep working at it. Keep going. Um, you'll be able to pull it through eventually. And the more you paint, the more you get comfortable with that middle period, knowing like, I've come through this a bunch of different times. I know I can, I can bring my work through it. It's not like it's going to stay there forever. I know where I'm going. You have confidence that you can work through it. All right, so we've got those petals and then this one. I'm going to do shorter strokes because this really is a much uh, a foreshortened sort of view. Okay. 
All right, where do we want to go from here? I think I'm going to do a, a lighter shade now coming from the edges of the petals. So I'm going to go ahead and rinse out my brush and make sure that I'm doing a quite a bit lighter color here. Okay, so I'm going to bring a bunch of white over and I think I'm going to go for a cooler purple now. We'll just see what we come up with when I add white to that area. We'll pull some blue over and you know what, for highlights I like to just be able to do them in a single stroke or two and so that requires more paint on my brush which requires me to make more paint so I don't run out. There. And I love that look of like a thick, a thick brush stroke. So I'm just going to use up my white and we're going to make our light purple, a nice big bunch of it. I'm going to hold it up and see that looks a little of an extreme jump from this color to the petal color that I have already there. So I'm going to bring some more pink over. We can just use the pink that's there. I'm going to bring a little bit more blue and I'm just going to inch it darker. I don't want to go add too much all at once. Just go a little bit at a time because you can always add more, but if you add too much, then it, then you're going to have to get more white and then you'll just end up with maybe even way more than you want and you'll end up kind of wasting that paint. So I just try to inch it towards the color I want. Mm, still a little a little light. Okay, let's, I like that. I think this color is going to have a really nice contrast with that dark, dark background. Cause this, the color we have right here, it's kind of like just a value or two lighter than this dark blue background. Maybe even just, yeah, it depends on what area you're looking at cause there's variation there, but I like to have that nice contrast of a, a quite a bit lighter color. So now I'm just going to take it to the edges and just do some individual little strokes here. And we're just going to kind of add that fluttery texture here. Oh yeah. And some bigger strokes, some shorter strokes, just to add, to add that variety. Ooh, I love this one. I like that. <laughs> I like that one a lot. Okay, so this petal is overlapping. I've chosen that it's going to overlap this lower one. So now I'm going to kind of define its overlapping edge right there. And then this one, get some little, some little strokes. And I'm going to work at keeping them shorter because it's overall a shorter sort of a petal. And then we'll go ahead and... Um... Okay, I think this big petal looks like it's coming over like that. looks like a pretty definite edge there. So then this one will be behind it. All right, let's see. I mm, feel like I need another little stroke here. Okay, so now I'm just gonna look all around it, see this area maybe needs a little, a little something. I feel like my light color actually went a little too far, far inwards there. I don't mind having some variation on that, but it's kind of standing out to me as looking like it's doing something 
different than all the other areas of the painting. So I'm just going to bring a little light, a little, uh, more of a pinky color back up into it, just to soften that a little bit. Kind of like that idea for this one too. Whoop. When you go back and forth on wet paint, you end up dragging the colors back and forth into each other. So you have to watch out for that if that's not what you're intending to do. Mm, and then this little corner right here is looking a little funky. So I'm just going to add a bit of the pink right there. Okay. That is looking really nice. So I think I'm going to do maybe my dark, my dark areas here. And then we'll put our light, our light green in the middle. Um, yeah, I might come back to these and add an even lighter color. I think it depends on what the center ends up looking like. I always say that for my flowers, once I get the center in there, it really helps to bring the flower into focus. And I can kind of think about what the rest of it needs better once the middle's there. So let's go ahead and do that. Okay. So we're going to add those darker shapes. Um, trying to decide if I'm going to switch sizes of brush. Um, I'm just imagining the size of stroke this is going to do. I think I'll keep this for the black and then, and then move to a smaller brush when um, I do the more uh, details of the stamen and the piston and all of that part. Pistol, not piston, <laughs> pistol. Okay, I'm gonna do my black here and I think I'll add a little magenta and a little blue to it so it's almost like a blackish purple. I think that would be pretty if it ends up kind of showing up as a color, just a slight, slightly altering it. Here. I don't know if you're really going to be able to see that in the painting or not. Maybe when the light kind of shines on the surface of the painting, you might be able to see it. But I kind of like doing something other than just flat, flat black. Okay, so now the black shape kind of comes up in the center of each petal. It doesn't take up the whole width of the petal. It just is like this shorter or this narrower um, little oval patch. So I think I'm going to do a stroke in the middle and then kind of like stroke out on either side to widen it. There. I want to think about the way my petals are going too. So this one probably is going to curve a bit with the way that I've painted that petal. Um... I think I, I think I I think I want them actually a little larger. I'm gonna go back to this one, just enlarge it slightly. And I like the idea of the edges not being so crisp, so I might bring another color in and like that magenta and kind of soften the edges. You have to be careful with that because it really um can the black can get away from you really quickly once it starts blending with other colors and kind of muddying everything. So, okay, I'm gonna leave that one. Or maybe just a little bigger there. So we'll see. I'll kind of evaluate once these are all in and we'll see what it needs, but I love this already. It's so, so bold. Okay, I think I'm just going to grab a little magenta on the end of my brush, maybe a little bit of this white here to lighten it up and just streak it just a little bit on the edges of these. Yeah, I like that. It see, it just kind of softens it and makes it, um, it makes a bit of a transition between it and the rest of the petal. 
just kind of makes it more interesting. There we go. Yeah. some of that white color that didn't get mixed in. There we go. Let's just go over it. I think that'll definitely help this lower area, this bottom one. It was looking really rough to me. Yeah, that adds, it's almost like the black then is having a little bit of variation in it where it's like really dark, but it might have a sheen of a warmer color in it. Yeah, I think that's really pretty. I want to add a bit more of this slightly more red version over here. Okay. There. Don't want to overdo it. There. I think that's good. Nice. I think that's so lovely. And um, I can adjust the shape of the blacks, the black the black mark. <laughs> Gonna adjust that shape once I put in the center. If they look a little weird, like once the center is there, it'll help me know, um, you know, what is really showing beyond what I paint there. Okay, so now I'm gonna rinse out my big brush and I'm gonna bring my smaller, smaller round brush to get, whoops, that's the wrong one. Get, get it wet and ready to go here. So now there's um, there's this like light green pistol in the middle, and then there's a little um, whitish, whitish, creamy kind of colored um, stamens kind of all sticking up. So I'm gonna make the very center first, that white, yellow, green. And actually, I need to set down my brush and get some more white because that is all that's all gone. Um, I'm gonna put it down there just so I don't get it mixed in with my purple. Okay, so here is, hmm, that might be too much yellow. Yellow, this yellow is really strong. I have a really intense yellow. I, this is a Liquitex yellow, Liquitex Professional, so it's a, it is a really good brand that has good, good color intensity. Not all yellows do have that, um, but the the more expensive, higher quality brands of acrylic paints make really wonderful opaque yellows. Okay, I like that color actually in this yellowy kind of color because it's yellow is the complementary color of purple. It's just like, wow, I love it so much. It looks so good up against that. Okay, so now I have to kind of watch out for pulling the black into this color too much. So I'm going to try to get a good amount. See how I have a blob of it on my brush? I'm going to try to be, um, kind of do it with as short single strokes as possible and reloading my brush to kind of, um, keep the paint from just blend, blend, blending all together. Okay. Things like this, these really like decisive moves in a painting make me a little nervous and then I just have to say, go, go. <laughs> just do it. And they have, um, they have these ribs sort of all going towards the center. Um, I'm not sure if I'm going to get real as detailed as that. But it isn't a perfectly smooth circle, so that's why I'm not painting it as, like, super smooth around the outside edges. There. Okay, I think that's the size I want. That looks so nice and bright. Mm, I think I'm going to use white or maybe a lighter version of this yellowy green to kind of show the light on those ribs because they're, they seem to me a little lighter. So now I'm going to just kind of do some little streaks towards the center. I'm not going to get into the super fine details of it. They're pretty like thin little lines and there's a bunch of them, but I'm just going to do a few kind of going, showing that directional line look there. 
Oops, actually brushed my hand on there and got purple on me. There. I'm just kind of can re rework it and see how I have such thick paint on there that I'm not even, and I'm touching it very softly, I'm not even touching the black that's under this. So there, I think that's really nice. And now we're gonna go ahead. Oh, you know what, actually, um, for fun, on, on green, any centers that have sort of a green cast, I love just adding a little bit of darker green. And it, it's just for fun, it's just for a little visual interest. It really is not there, <laughs> but it doesn't have to be. I like to add it because I think it's fun and expressive. There, that just kind of adds a little something there. Okay, so now we're gonna do those little cream stamens. And there's a ton of them. And some of the photos I'm seeing are like, they're very fluffy. Like there's just so many of them. And then some are more minimal. I'm gonna start out more minimal and kind of build them up. I can always add more. That's like my, the thing I work by. You know what, I could have probably tinted it with this a little bit. And then I'm gonna pull in just a little bit of the red to make it more like cream rather than yellow yellowy green. Add a bit of warmth to it. There we go. Now I'm going to be painting these on top of this wet black color and you can definitely let your painting dry. You don't have to paint it wet onto wet but since I'm going for it here and I'm not taking any breaks I'm just gonna go ahead and do it and just use light strokes and sometimes when I paint wet onto wet beautiful blends happen that would not happen otherwise if it was all dry underneath. So I'm gonna embrace that and if it blends a little bit, it'll be okay. Okay, I'm just looking at my references to think what direction. They all just, I don't know, kind of go towards the center, but there is a bit of a, a space between them and this middle circle. So I'm just going to leave them stopping short of it. Ooh, see, you can kind of see the black blending and I think that's really pretty. So I'm gonna go back for some more paint and just keep working all around and you can do some longer ones and some shorter ones. I actually really like that, that little bit of a blend look and it just softens them in, in a way that I think is really lovely. Oh yeah. <laughs> see, I get excited about things like that. I know you can't probably see it all that well, but like some pink is mixing in. All right, now I can probably add some extra ones to widen the ring slightly and it'll have even a more um, sort of a wide fluffy feeling. There, and we're gonna just draw those in there. Cool. Okay, so we're gonna do a few overlapping. So I'm just adding them kind of slowly, carefully. I have learned from experience that you can overdo it on these, and if you add them too quick without kind of being able to evaluate as you paint, it's easy for me to just overdo it and make it look really messy and too full. So I'm just trying to, I try to build it out slowly so I can kind of see like there. Maybe I'll add a little bit like one or two to add that space there. I think that's so pretty. Ooh, I love it, you guys. Okay. Now, what's my next move? I think I want to add one lighter shade of purple to the edges, just the tips of some of these um, for even more contrast. I'd love just bumping it up and making it really contrasty towards the edges because it's just it's so pretty that way. It just, it's what I like to do. So I'm just gonna use my small brush because 
um, they're small enough shapes. Like I'm not thinking about the petal as a whole and needing to do big strokes. I'm just thinking about highlighting some of these smaller ones. So that will be fine to do with a much smaller brush. There, I think that's lovely. We're gonna use this. I'm just gonna kind of do a little stroke here and there on some of these guys. Ooh, and see, that just makes them pop. I think I need to add it just a bit of water to help it flow off my brush a bit more. Ooh, this is always like such an exciting part for me because it's just like, oh, it's all coming together. It's really getting some beautiful contrast going. This is so fun. Okay. Now that, I don't know if I like that there. I don't know. It's like so much closer to the center than all the other ones. I'll have to look at it after I'm done. I might, I might be being too picky. So once I work my way all the way around. We'll look at it again. Yes, I think that's so nice. There we go. Okay, uh, I'm like on the edge of not having enough to keep going all the way around. So I'm gonna bring a little bit. Let's see if I can get some of this over here. Did that. That actually might have made too dark of a color. Yeah, it's a little on the dark side, so I'm gonna bring a bit more weight. Here we go. And we'll just finish that whole that whole shape out all the way around the petal. Let me think, okay, I think I want to do a few, just a bit larger. Yeah, see, ooh. <laughs> it just really makes it pop, I love it guys. Okay, so now we're gonna make a green for our leaves and um, the little pods. I think I'm gonna do re the rest of the painting with the small brush. I don't think any of those things really need a large brush. So I'm gonna go ahead and just bring some of my green down here and I'm just gonna add it to this. That might've been a little, a lot of green. Bring some of the yellow in, some of my magenta to kinda Mute it a little bit, make it a bit more of a brown green. Okay, then I'm gonna hold it up. Actually, I think it needs to lighten up quite a bit, so I'm just gonna grab some of this and bring it over. To lighten up and get a little bit warmer. There we go, that's more like it. I want I want a good bit of contrast, but I'll probably add a lighter tone on top of this as well. So we'll just go with it. Okay, so now I'm going to get a little water in there to help it flow, because I always find when I'm painting on paper, the, the paint doesn't, want to flow off my brush quite as smoothly as with a canvas. And so I'm just going to swirl that together, thin it out, make a bit more fluid. Okay. So I'm imagining, I think I want a stem. Just kind of imagining where I might want some seed pods showing up and then where I might want the the stem for this flower and then the stems for those other things. Mm. Okay, 
I'm just gonna just go for it. I like to have my sims be a little, a little curved, a little asymmetrical, not perfectly coming from the middle straight up. That just looks a little, a little unorganic. You know, we want our flowers to look organic. So I think I'm gonna have another one come up and just sort of hint at it disappearing behind there and then reappearing. And we're gonna have a couple seed pods up here. Oof, this green, this green is really, really, really just green, 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 green. And I don't particularly like that. So I'm gonna add some more red, some more yellow. It was just, I think when I added the white in there, it made it almost turn like minty green, which is fine, but something about that shade was bothering me. <laughs> so we're gonna change it, make it more brown. There we go. I'll just streak it on these guys and not worry too much about it. I like having a variety of greens generally in my paintings, like a wide variety of greens. And so um, it's not a big deal if some are different than others in my book. Okay, so we're gonna do a big old seed pod. I'm just imagining where I want another one. You know what, I think I'm just going to um, hint at another one right here actually. Have a little bit of like a thicker, little, almost like a little skirt thingy <laughs> coming out the bottom. Okay, so we're gonna have those. And then, hmm, I'm seeing like buds that are hanging over, which I think are really lovely, like they're curving. So I think I'm just gonna try. Try one of those right there. And they're like just a little green. Actually, they're bigger at, whoops, I did it opposite of what they really should be. Thin at the end. When they connect into the stem, they're thicker up there. There we go. And... I might just hint. What do I want to hint at? The leaves. I think I might just make another little mark there. I feel like I need like a trio of something going on. And I will hint at another stem maybe going up to that other seed pod. And I think I'm going to have a leaf. Just, um, they kind of have like leaves that have sort of serrated edges. I'm not going to worry about being perfect, but I think I'm going to aim for more of a um, kind of a rough edged leaf like that. There. I like that. Hinting at that shape. And then maybe a little bit just sort of suggesting another leaf back there, a little bit more greenery. Oh, I like that. And I'm trying to imagine if I want anything else. Maybe just like a little a little something right there. Let's add let's add some details. I think that's good. I think that really like accents the flower but doesn't steal steal too much of your attention from it. Mm, I think I need I think I need some of this white. I'm just gonna steal some of this white from over here and lighten up. Mm, the purple in it is making a bit more of a muted a muted green, which Actually, it's kind of pretty. I don't think it got light enough though, so I'm gonna bring it some more light out here. Okay, so now there we go. It's like a kind of a minty, a muted mint color, which I like. Okay, and the, the seed pods they have these little. 
these little, I don't even know what they are. They're like funky little star shaped things at the top, which is super cool texture wise. So it's going to make them have, have their little stars. <laughs> And um, I think I'll just sort of add this as sort of like a little defining color on them. And then they have that little, uh, it's like a little, like husk sort of a little thingy at the bottom where they connect in to the, Connect into the stem, and then I'll just sort of add this, kind of highlight this guy a little bit. Yeah, I, I like just kind of leaving it loose and brushy. Get a bit more water and just add a, some little highlights to the leaves. Not worrying about the leaves being perfect because they're just sort of an accent. My leaves are always just more abstracted, not, not super specific. Okay, I think I want to make a slightly more um, golden green, a little bit more of like a chartreuse or something. So I'm going to add, oh yes because I love the yellow here in the center and I want to pull some of that warmth into the leaves and then I think that'll be our final thing. Okay, and just all the greenery, I'll just add some little dashes of it just for sort of a... Oops, an expressive feel here. we go. I really like that. I'm just getting lost in it. Sorry, I'm not talking because I'm just getting lost in it. <laughs> uh, let's see. Maybe a bit. You know what? I always end up wanting yellow ochre out here and I don't know why I just don't put it on my palette in the first place. I'm so used to using it. I use yellow ochre in almost all my greens that I do in my paintings one way or another. If it's a warm green, I'm generally having it in there somewhere, so I need to just put it out on my palette. And see, it just makes this beautiful color so quickly. It's like it's like um, a really interesting muted yellow color already. It's like tending towards brown, and it just has that wonderful warmth that I just want to toss in a bit of that. And I think I'll add a little white and make a light version of that. So you can make like this neat kind of khaki color with that green and the ochre. And I just want to define these because they're a little bit more of a white, a whitish creamy, these little stars on top. Yes. See, and that just gives them a little bit more love and attention. I'm going to do the same thing for the bottoms. And then I kind of want to um, circle around the bottom with this. There, that kind of makes them look a little bit more finished on the bottom there. Since he's kind of like a star of the show, give it a little highlight there. There, I, 
I could get carried away on, on layering, layering, layering. So we're going to just kind of add this, this yellow ochre to those. And it's hard to tell. I think their leaves actually have an overall lighter kind of a feel to them. So I think I'm going to bring a bit more white over here and bring back that minty light green a little bit just because I think that looks so, oops, I guess it's more yellowy. Yeah, that's okay. There. Okay, now I'm just gonna give it a last look. Um, I feel like I wanna show the stem of the seed pods just a little bit more clearly just so we don't forget that they're like grounded. Okay, that's good. And then this kind of got there. All right, let me think. Any last things? There. I'm really happy with that. Just imagining what it would look like if there was something else there. But I feel like those, you know what? Um, I might want to define another seed pot. I really like trios of things, like groups of three. That just is really vi visually appealing. So I think I want to hint a bit more at an actual third seed pot up here so that um, we can see it as a group of three rather than two things kind of hanging out all by themselves up there. So I'm just gonna go ahead and do that. Show your little star shape a little bit, give you a swipe of the, the yellowy green. And then I think I'm gonna bring that darker green back in to kind of just help it look a little bit more similar to those there. There, see? Three. I like that a lot better. Okay, I think we're finished. Thank you so much for following along and for watching you guys. I hope you enjoyed it. I'll see you next time. Bye!